bolt three over there, which we're missing. I'm calling this meeting to order on Monday, January the 6th, 2014. I want to welcome everyone. Uh, very glad to have with us uh, Lee Delbridge of the Smarter Christian Church at 910 Concord Road. If uh, Pastor Delbridge will come forward, we're always glad to see you, Lee. You could be our full time minister. But uh, uh, he's, uh, Lee's going to give us the invocation and then leads in the place of flag. So, would everyone please rise? Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be here. We thank you for the beginning of a new year. We thank you for this day of life. We ask that you be with these city leaders. Give them wisdom to make the right decisions. Give them courage to be able to stand for what they know is right. We thank you for loving us. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For those folks that are new to town or looking to, for another church or just want to stop by, I'm sure they'd love to have you at uh, uh, Smyrna Christian Church at uh, 910 Concord Road on the opposite corner of Regions Bank. I actually spoke there one night, or one day, breakfast, for your Saturday group. It's a good group of folks. Uh, agenda changes, we do not have any. Uh, Merrill report, it's going to be cold tonight. That's all I'm going to tell everybody. Um, don't let your dog stay outside. Bring him in or hurry. Him. I don't have a husband, thank you. Uh, land issues, zonings, and annexations. Uh, a is V13-055. Public hearing appeal the decision of the License and Variance Board to deny variance request V13-055, allow a 5.5-foot brick privacy wall in a front yard, uh, 0.62 acres, landlot 521-1191, Powder Spring Street, Raymond Vito. Uh, Mr. Taylor, the background, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, as you mentioned, um, this is a variance, uh, actually an appeal of a variance um, to increase the allowable uh, privacy wall height in a front yard from four feet to five and a half feet at 1911 Powder Springs Street. Um, according to the applicant, a four foot fence or wall does not provide uh, the adequate privacy. Um, community Development has reviewed this request against the variance review standards and found it to be in compliance. Um, and Community Development does believe that there are sufficient privacy and security concerns that justify approval of the request. Um, staff does recommend approval. Um, in addition, this, this item went before the Smyrna License and Variance Board um, and is actually denied uh, by a vote of two to one, hence the appeal tonight. But staff does recommend approval. Um, the applicant is here, I think. I see him out there. Um, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone who's in opposition to or that would like to make any public comment concerning this uh, appeal of the decision of the License and Variance Board? All right, um, Scott, we don't have to, do we need to swear in anybody? The applicant, uh, Mr. Vito, would you please come up and be sworn in? And anybody else that would like to, or think they may want to make any kind of comment? See, that's what I like, is for the ladies to come on up now when everybody gets sworn in, because, and you don't have to speak, but. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, go ahead. This is in Ms. Terry Nuller, which is Warden. I'm not sure if she's going to let Ken make the presentation. Or... I will. Yeah. Okay. If you, if, uh, Ms. Vita, if you want to just have a seat, go back there and sit wherever you want to. There's plenty of seats tonight. Uh, Mr. Ken Sudrith. Thank you. Um, Mr. Taylor did outline what this request is about. It is an appeal. Uh, the applicant, uh, as you just saw, is uh, Mr. Raymond Vito. Uh, staff did recommend approval of the variance request. It did go... Uh, to the License and Variance Board for a denial uh, that was denied um, with a two-to-one vote. Um, 
Here is the, uh, the zoning map. It does give you sort of a bigger picture of where the property uh, is located uh, there uh, off of Powder Springs. This is the proposed uh, site plan uh, that the um, property owner provided us. In red is where the uh, fence is proposed to go. It does say five foot high uh, brick privacy in his note. It's actually 5.5 .5, um, feet in that, but it is 110 feet long and uh, it will uh, tie in with um, uh, the existing fencing that is there. It, uh, in addition, is 30 feet from the center line of the street and approximately 15 feet uh, or so from the back of the curb. This is what the petitioner has submitted with his application that he intends to replicate um, for the uh, proposed fence. I'm sure he'll, he will say more about that later. The proposed location of the fence is actually uh, indicated by some stakes out there, um, sort of uh, bamboo-looking uh, stakes. If you look sort of just to the left center of the photo, you will see um, the stakes uh, that the petitioner has actually put up to indicate where that fence um, is proposed. These are pictures of not only the house, but the subject property to uh, give you uh, just the overall view. There is a fence that is shown uh, there off of the street in that top photo uh, behind the tree that uh, is the one that will be replicated. Now the applicant is requesting to devi deviate from the maximum allowable, allowable height in the front yard. This is classified a front yard because it, it, it has street frontage, uh, even though it may, uh, in some views, look, uh, look like it's the side of the house. Now according to the zoning ordinance, you've got to follow um, certain standards uh, and they have to be reviewed when we're dealing with a variance application whether there are unique and special or extraordinary circumstances applying to the property, whether any alleged hardship is, is self-created by any person having an interest in the property, whether strict application of the relevant provisions of the code would deprive uh, the applicant of reasonable use of the property, and whether the variance proposed is the minimum uh, variance needed. Obviously, we we consider uh, a lot of times more than these aspects, but at a minimum, we consider at least these four. Now, community development, as already uh, stated earlier, has reviewed uh, this request against those standards, and we believe that there is indeed uh, grounds for um, the, the security and privacy concerns uh, on that. We do think that there are some uh, special circumstances given the topography of the land, as you can see in the slide uh, that uh, showed the stakes there where the fence was to be because it does uh, fall off, forcing the fence actually um, to be um, at the top of that hill. It also, um, uh, to achieve what he wants, it keeps him asking the, the minimum variance as opposed to going further down the slope and asking for a greater variance. Uh, as a result of that, um, staff is recommending uh, approval of this request. We do not see that there's any negative precedent associated with it. And um, both at the time that this was heard by the variance, License and Variance Board, as well as tonight, we have not received any opposition uh, regarding this request. Uh, and as I said, staff is indeed uh, supportive of this uh, request. I would like to say, since there is an appeal here coming from a denial from the License and Variance Board, which is different than what staff, I do feel an obligation to tell you that um, in reviewing the minutes as well as talking uh, with members of the board, uh, that uh, even though that was a two to one uh, vote, the person making the recommendation to deny this actually f had concerns uh, about whether the hardship had actually been justified. This is a difference of opinion. That's why we have a process to go through uh, on this. 
but that is why there is a difference. Um, they looked at it a little bit differently than I did in putting together staff's recommendation on that. Happy to answer any questions uh, on that, but uh, staff does recommend approval of this uh, uh, request. You might have any questions of Ms. Sudra? No, uh, just for a little bit of background, when um, when Joey Sobs, the city planner, originally gave me the heads up that there, this was going to be going before license and variance, I believe my reply that I emailed him was something like, you know, sounds good or thanks for the heads up. But I, um, I, I actually did encourage the homeowners to appeal, and I'm glad they did appeal. I think that their home is, is a tremendous. Um, they did a very thoughtful, thorough lovely job in my opinion building that home I, from what I can see from my review of the application and of looking at the property this wall is consistent with what they have now it is a reasonable request and I and I do support this I'll just ask if, if any any if there are any other questions by any of the council I know the applicant is here they've been sworn in does anyone want to have any questions uh, mr. Vito if you'll come forward uh, And just introduce yourself and tell us where you live. And Hi, yes, uh, my name is Ray Vito, and I live at 1191 Park Spring Street in Smyrna. It's on the corner of you. If you don't know the corner, I, I can give your identity out. Uh, it's 1191, is that right? 91, yes. Corner sir. of um, Hamby, I guess, and Village something in Spider Springs. The house is unbelievable. It was uh, formerly owned by the Duns. And I, one of these two girls I watched work one day, I wasn't stalking y'all, but they were working so hard in that yard. And I pulled up and said how nice it was. I don't know which one it was. Joni, yeah. my wife. I didn't offer any to help. I just well, we can, said we you can, look great we can, working here. You know? We can use that as much help with that yard. It's a, it's a, we get a lot of sun over it's there. A nice, it's a uh, nice, uh, it, it turned nice. out great. Well, it's nice to see, I mean, I'm, I'm a neighbor. I, I mean, I, I live, I can... When, in the wintertime, I can see your property from my from my bedroom window. And Mrs. Dunn kept a wonderful garden. And, and it, one of the things that is so nice is that the property has stayed in the hands of people who 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 appreciate. I think the care that she gave to the gardens over the decades, and then that that's continuing. Well, we preserved a lot, a lot of her daff daffodils. Joni dug most of them up and kept them out there, so she lives on. Yeah. Any questions? I, I know there was some uh, some discussion. I'll ask any councilman if they got a question, Mr. Lenica. Mr. Vito, um, thank Sir. you for being here tonight. Um, you know, what we've been led to, to understand is that part of the reason that you're asking for this is the headlights of the cars, which have become more obnoxious, if that's the right word, I'm not sure, um, since the trees were removed along Patter Spring Street. Um, you're proposing to build your wall right on the property line um, are you aware that the city is planning to replant trees back where the other trees were? Yes, sir. We're, we're aware of that. And perhaps the same kind of trees. Well, that's, that's true. Uh, but I think by the time they get to the point where they really add significant privacy or restore anything like what we had before, uh, it'll be a very long time, as you know. Those trees that were there were quite mature. Uh, beautiful trees, and I'm very, we're all very sorry to see them go. All the neighbors have commented along the same lines. So, yes, we're aware that they're going to be replanted, but uh, I think by the time they're really functional in terms of providing the privacy we had before, it's going to be a very long time. Yeah, I'm less concerned about that than the possibility that the new trees with their root systems may grow into, and I'm not sure how the foundation or footings are going to be set for your wall, but what happens if the tree roots of the new city trees damage your wall because it's so close? Who's responsible? Well, we'll be responsible. I'm sure, I'm sure if there's any damage done to that wall. First of all, if you know our builder who will be doing this wall, he builds walls that don't get influenced by anything. He's quite thorough and very, very good. Uh, so I'll definitely be sure that it's built well and to a high standard, and I'm happy to provide that standard to the people that would like to review it. Uh, but if anything happens, certainly we'll be responsible. Okay. I want it to look nice. I, mean, I don't want a crumbly brick wall. I want a brick wall that looks as nice as the one you saw in the picture. Yeah, and I'm just concerned about potential future liability for the taxpayers. Well, I, I would be happy to do whatever it takes to commit to maintaining that wall in, in as good a condition as it is on day one for 
as long as I need to. Thank you, and I, I appreciate that. Um, the other question I have is, is it possible to, and maybe you can explain to us in your own words why it is or isn't, is it possible to move the wall back from the property line a couple of feet in order to plant some kind of green landscaping or something to help beautify the wall to the motorists and the visitors of the park across the street? Well, uh, the, the problem there is that the land slopes down quite a bit, so if you move it over, you end up making the wall be quite a bit lower. Uh, it's pretty steep there. Uh, but we would have no problem at all planting something on the outside of the wall to soften it if that's really an issue. We hadn't really given it a lot of thought, but I think that's certainly worth doing if, if it makes sense. Okay, thank you. Okay, Any other questions, comments? Mr. Vito, there was some some questions or comments about you tying this wall into the other wall. Is that a? But I'm I'm looking at the plan. It doesn't show that. But is that a one of the options that you were planning on doing? There's a little patio there, the brick wall that was shown in the picture that you saw earlier that we're going to be copying. There's a patio there, and it's it's bricked in, and, and the wall when it comes down along the street would tie into that wall. So just to make it look look good, and also just enclose it. It's only about three or four or five feet to tie into the existing wall. Any other questions, comments? I wanted to make a comment with regards to, to the tree roots. And since, since, you know, we, we will be replanting and hopefully a, a hardier species that is less susceptible to termite damage would be, would be the hope. Um, but you could build a wall tomorrow that's four feet high on the property line. And so I think with regards to the issue of tree roots, that is not as great of a concern to me because, again, you could build a wall tomorrow that's four feet high. That would not require a variance, and the tree roots wouldn't differentiate between a four-foot high wall and a five-and-a-half-foot wall if they're going to damage anything. Good point. Ms. Wilkinson, of course. Um, hi. I was wondering, uh, in our um, paperwork that we received, there is a photograph of, uh, of an existing wall, and there was some question about the height of that wall. I was wondering if you could clarify. Um, I, the, don't think, the, I think it's a five. It might be, I think it's about a five-foot wall, but I'm not quite sure, frankly. There was some grading that was done finally. I think it was supposed to be a five-foot wall, but some of the final grading may have changed the way, how much it comes out of the ground. I'm not sure, honestly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Albert, anything else? Terry, anything else? I do not have anything else. Okay. It's your motion, then. Okay. I don't have it unless these two ladies or anybody else. Well, you might have just leave it alone. We do have uh, several supporters here tonight yeah. who would be happy to speak or answer anything. Questions. I mean, you're free to say whatever you want to say. You got to come up here though. Tell us who you are and where you live at. Hold on, hold on. Tell us who you are and where you live. Sandra Chase, eleven eighty nine Powder Spring Street. I'm on the other side of the house. Mm -hmm. Um, my yard essentially is a big porch on the back of the house, and I sit out there a lot, not tonight, but I do in the fall, um, sit out there a lot with a little throw, and the lights are, are a nuisance. When you come, when they come around that corner from the police station heading toward the straightened part of the Powder Spring Street, it, it just hits you dead on, and I, I believe that the only way you're going to be able to keep those lights sort of off our eyeballs mm -hmm. is if that fence is on the crest of that hill because if you bring it down the lights are just going to go over it again i don't i think it would defeat the purpose thank you yeah, don't be sitting out there tonight <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Cushion. I'm from 1171 Potter Spring Street, and I have sort of the same issue. And when I'm on my back porch, ever since they cut the trees and all that down, you can see traffic and people walking up there real clearly, and I'm, I'm in favor of having the wall there myself. Yeah, all right, good deal. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Norwich. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. 
one more comment. I just uh, would like to say that two of our, we did not go out and solicit comments from neighbors, but two of our neighbors did hear about this and, and came by to spe specifically express their support for doing it. Uh, Richard Pekka and James uh, McKinder both came by to express that. Good deal. Thank you very much. And I think Ms. Nolowitz had informed us earlier that she had not received any uh, complaints or. Not even from Mr. Pecha, which is. Richard's a good man. <laughs> he's, 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 a, he's an Gave me a book one time about a horse. Go ahead. Well, at this time, then, I would like to move to approve this appeal. Um, it's appealing the decision of the License and Variance Board to deny the variance request V13-055. This would then allow a 5.5-foot brick privacy wall in a front yard. This is a 0.62-acre landlot, 521. It's 1191 Powder Spring Street. The applicant is Raymond Vito. Second. Motion second. <clears throat> Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. Let's approve five to two. Thank y'all very much. Item five is previous licenses. We have none. Item six is formal business. We don't have any. Seven is commercial building permits. We have none. Consent agenda. Mr. Taylor, will you please read the consent agenda for council's approval? Certainly. We have five items on the consent agenda this evening. Item A is an approval of the December 16, 2013 Mayor and Council meeting minutes. Item B is an approval to use the Council Chambers on January the 9th, 2014 from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. for the Heritage of Vinings HOA meeting. Uh, it's Ward 6. Item C is an approval to award RFP 14-010 uh, um, for a Wolf Center roof replacement to the lowest bidder, American Property Restoration Incorporated, for $61,923.92. Um, and authorize the mayor to execute any related documents. Item D is an approval to accept a 2014 uh, LMIG grant, that stands for Local Maintenance Improvement Grant, um, and authorize the mayor to execute any related documents. And the final uh, item is to award RFP 14-013 for the River Valley Drive sewer um, or, uh, project to the lowest bidder, Ardito Construction Company, for $88,000, and authorize the mayor to execute any related documents. Your motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Motion a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. It's approved 7 0. Item 9 is committee reports. We'll start tonight with Council Member and Mayor Pro Tem, Ms. Melanie Pritch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I hope everyone had a happy new year and is looking forward to a wonderful 2014. We've got a lot of exciting things that are coming down the pike and a lot of people who are starting to build and buy some of these lots and do some things. So this council's looking forward to having a great year. And with that, I yield, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Andrea Bluestein. I, I see Mr. Sudra shaking his head, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that means he has no has nothing to say tonight, and um, I don't have the report, so I yield. Uh, Ms. Terry Nullowich. I do not have anything tremendous to report at all. Everyone needs to stay warm. That's rather obvious. And I would also like to comment that I was very delighted to see fewer trees on the curb than I have any year prior to this. I hope that most people, the reason there are fewer trees in the curb is because people brought them to be chipped. But um, it was nice. In my neighborhood, I only saw one tree on the curb to go to the landfill, and I'm going to tell myself that everyone else either has a fake tree or they are, that they, that they took it to be chipped. So with that, I yield. Mr. Corky Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No committee reports if need it this evening, but I will remind everyone to leave your faucet dripping tonight. Temperature is supposed to get down somewhere in the seven degree range, so if you leave your faucet dripping, hopefully it'll help you pipes from freezing. With that, Mr. Mayor, I yield. It's Susan Wilkinson. Thank you. Um, I don't have any uh, reports from uh, the departments, but I just want to wish everyone a happy new year, and um, with that, I yield. Mr. Wade Lenica. Thank you, Your Honor. As we noted in approving the consent agenda, we have an annual meeting Thursday night this week, January 9th, with the Heritage at Vinings Homeowner Association. Uh, look forward to that meeting, seeing those folks and helping them with anything coming up. Um, other than that, uh, again, I hope everyone had great holidays. Happy New Year to everybody. 
and the city of Smyrna is moving forward. With that, I yield. Mr. Ron Fennell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> First of all, from public safety, uh, the police department was busy over the holiday weekend, made uh, seven DUI arrests, ten other citations uh, on traffic, uh, had uh, eight state warrants issued, and uh, ten city ordinance violations uh, cited. Uh, just know that police department works 24-7, 365. Let's thank them for what they do out there as you run across them. From the fire department, Deputy Chief Acri uh, sent a note around today on safety tips during these cold uh, weather days. If you have an opportunity to go on the website and take a look at those, uh, their National Weather Service safety tips. But if you know of someone or someone is out there who is in need of help, if they lose power or if they lose uh, heat, uh, you can call the city, call the police department or the fire department, and they'll find some way to get you some help. Uh, just know that your city uh, services are available to you. Take advantage of them if you need to. And this time of year, the, uh, the biggest problem in creating small house fires uh, are those portable heaters. And uh, just be aware of that. If you know somebody who needs an outreach, you can call uh, one of those departments, and they'll help you out. Um, also, uh, Paige Day, our new fire chief, started uh, work today. We uh, welcome her, and two weeks from today, she'll be here to present the uh, fire department's report. So we look forward to that. Anybody who wants to meet her in the meanwhile, she'll be tooling around the city, uh, getting familiar with her uh, area. But uh, she will be at the Smyrna Business Association luncheon this Thursday at the Smyrna Community Center at lunchtime. Uh, you can go to smyrnabusiness.org to sign up for that. Uh, we welcome your uh, attendance and uh, get a chance to meet her. Uh, apart from that, my p final thought is uh, today starts the first uh, or the next half of this term of this council. We're halfway through. We're starting the second part of our term. Uh, along with uh, the Mayor Pro Tem, I agree, we're poised uh, to launch this year into uh, an uptick. There are a lot of building permits. There's been a lot of activity. And, and I'm excited about what the Smyrna uh, of today and the Smyrna of tomorrow uh, are going to become because of what happens in 2014. And I wish everyone a safe and happy new year. I yield, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Eric Tyler. Mr. Scott Cochran. Mr. Terry Graham. Believe it or not, we have no one that signed up for citizens' um, input, and we do not have a show cause here. So, um, happy 2014. Uh, I declare this meeting adjourned at uh, 8 o'clock.